Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at accounts receivable turnover ratio or debtors turnover ratio or receivables turnover ratio. These terms will be used interchangeably for this ratio. In our previous lesson, we looked at debtors collection period and we explained what it is and went through an example on that one and we showed its relationship to this ratio over here, accounts receivable turnover ratio. So after you check out this one, you might wanna also check out that one to thoroughly understand the two ratios properly. But in this lesson, as we look at accounts receivable turnover ratio, we're going to explain what it is, we're going to go through the example, showing you how to calculate it, and we're going to show you also how to analyze such a ratio, as well as how to improve how, how to improve the ratio to make it better for the company. But what is accounts receivable turnover ratio? This ratio basically measures how many times on average in a given period an entity collects cash from its debtors. Okay, so it will basically tell you the number of times in a given period it will collect or it collects money from its debtors. Most likely when you're calculating the accounts receivable turnover ratio, you're calculating it over a period of a year. 365 days or 360 days. So we are calculating how many times it will collect cash from its debtors in that period in one year, okay? Sometimes you'll be calculating it for six months or for quarterly. So it depends what the question is. But like I said, most, most likely you're calculating it for a year. Generally, the higher the ratio, the better it is for the entity because it means that it is turning its receivables into cash more times in a period okay so the higher the answer is for this one here it means that you're turning your receivables or your debtors control into cash more times in that period okay this ratio is very key for entities that rely heavily on accounts receivables that is debtors for their cash flows okay so if they're relying on the money they're yet to receive from their debtors if they're relying on that money this ratio will make the most sense because they will want to pay attention to how the company is performing with regards to this ratio. The entity should occasionally review its credit policies in order to ensure that its ratio is at an acceptable level. Okay, so this ratio has to do with the company's credit policies and credit terms among other things, but this one is what will matter when it comes to this ratio, how they adjust their credit policies or credit terms, okay? Caution should, however, be exercised because although the accounts receivable turnover may be high, which that's what every entity would strive for to make it high, the entity's credit terms may appear too strict to customers and potential customers. Customers usually lean towards entities with a more lenient credit terms, okay? With more lenient credit terms, okay? So what we are saying here is that although we want the accounts receivable turnover ratio to be high, if it's high, it may mean that our credit terms or our credit policies are very strict. And it may appear too strict to some customers that we currently have or some potential customers who are contemplating using our services. Okay, so if it appears too strict, they may go to other suppliers who are a bit more lenient. So we have to pay attention to that as well. We don't want the A ratio to be just high. We also want to monitor it against the sales that we are able to make or against the customers we are able to retain right? In line with those credit terms. I hope it's making sense. So let's go into it. Let me show you what is the formula for the accounts receivable turnover ratio. Well, here is the formula. It's net credit sales divided by average accounts receivables. Net credit sales divided by average accounts receivables. And here we are talking about the numerator being the net credit sales. So we are talking about the sales that you made on credit, okay? So they didn't pay cash for it. It was made on credit. So you're gonna expect the money to be paid to you by your debtors or by your accounts receivable, okay? So the net credit sales, remember, we're not focusing about the, we're not talking about the entire sales because some sales are made on cash. We're talking about only those ones which are made on credit, okay? So that's the one which is the net credit sales. And we're, we're divided by the average accounts receivable, okay? And what do we mean by average accounts receivable? Average accounts receivable is accounts receivable at the beginning of the year plus accounts receivable at the end of the year. And we divide that answer by two, okay? And by accounts receivable at the beginning of the year, we are talking about the accounts receivable at the end of the previous year, which is the same as accounts receivable at the beginning of this year. 
okay so it's very simple we'll go into the example and you'll see how that works right now so let's show you how to do this one here's the first example we're given the company's balance sheet and income statement or the statement of financial position and the statement of comprehensive income okay so here we have a snippet of the uh, balance sheet or the statement of financial position we don't need the other parts you can see we only have the assets portions current assets and non-current assets and our income statement is also abbreviated so we don't need much details but if you are given the financial statements like this one here it should be easy for you to calculate your accounts receivable turnover ratio and i'll show you how to do that now okay so what is the formula well what are we asked to do we are asked to calculate the accounts receivable turnover ratio of the company and what is the formula for doing that remember we had mentioned it it's net credit sales divided by average accounts receivable okay so where do we get the net credit sales we get it in the income statement or the statement of comprehensive income so we go here we've got sales or revenue so it may be written as sales or revenue and it's eight hundred thousand rand okay. but that is total revenue i want the revenue or the sales which were made on credit here at the bottom you can see we are told that the credit sales is 40 percent of the total revenue okay so we want that 40 percent because we are focusing on net credit sales only the credit sales so we calculate 40 percent of 800,000 rand total revenue and how much does that give us well the credit sales is 800,000 times 40 percent it gives us 320,000 rand that is the credit sales that is the net credit sales that we put as our numerator okay the next thing that we need to compute is the average accounts receivable where do we get that we get that in our balance sheet or the statement of financial position and you can see here 2017 is on our right and 2018 is on our left so you can see here under current assets we have accounts receivable for 2017 is 28,000 rand which is the accounts receivable at the beginning of 2018 as well the same thing and then 2018 end of 2018 is the 26,000 rand so we add the two together 26,000 plus 28,000 and then we divide it by two and we get 27,000 rand. That is the average, on average, the accounts receivable is 27,000 rand. So now we have our numerator, which is the 320,000 rand credit sales, net credit sales, and we have our denominator, which is the average accounts receivable of 27,000 rand. So all we need to do is to take the 320,000 rand divided by 27,000 rand, and it gives us 11.85 okay now we have just calculated our accounts receivable turnover ratio what does it mean well the accounts receivable turnover ratio being 11.85 it means on average we collect cash from our debtors or from accounts receivable 11 times in one year or 12 times in one year if we round it off okay so 11.85 times in one year that is the number of times we are collecting cash from our debtors what does it mean is it the good thing is it the bad thing well like any other ratio in isolation it does not give you enough information it does not tell you much it does not make much sense it's good when it's comparable you're able to compare it okay so usually in your question i'm sure you may be given either the accounts receivable turnover ratio of the previous year or of the of the previous year or of the previous five years and you can see the trend over the five years how has it been performing are we collecting the money from our debtors more times or less times that is what the accounts receivable turnover ratio will tell you okay so let me give you an example if it, for the previous year it was 15 and now it's 11.85 that means we're collecting cash from our debtors 11 times this year while in the previous year we were able to collect it 15 times that means we are less efficient than we were the previous year okay because the previous year we we're collecting it more times but you don't leave it at that you have to consider the fact that maybe the company decided to uh, to make it a bit more lenient make their credit terms a bit more lenient so that it can attract more customers so there is another factor that would lower the accounts receivable turnover ratio another way that this is useful is when you compare it to other companies or your competitor or the industry average so you may be given your competitors accounts receivable turnover ratio if yours is higher you're doing better than them generally if theirs is higher they're doing better than you but if you also have the industry average you can see whether you are above average or you are under average and that is how you're able to compare and analyze this ratio so if you have to explain it basically we are able to collect the cash from our accounts receivable or from our debtors 11.85 times that's how much we're able to do that in this specific 
year and that is how you analyze the accounts receivable turnover ratio so what if your accounts receivable turnover ratio is too low or it's too high what do you do in that instance how do you control your 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 customers or your accounts receivable well here are a few measures that you use to control your accounts receivable and we mentioned this as well when we talk about the debtors collection period the exact same measures these measures are not exhaustive they're not the only ones but these are generally the measures that are used to control the accounts receivable you can offer discounts for prompt payment or prompt settlement that means for those that pay early you tell your your debtors or your accounts receivable that if you pay early we we'll give you a discount of a specific percentage or if you pay within 15 days for instance will give you one percent discount or two percent discount that will encourage them to pay on time or to pay quickly another one is to send statements timelessly send them statements of how much they currently owe okay another one is to use reminder options like uh emails so you can send them occasional emails to remind them of the money that they owe you and when the due date is Another one is to charge interest on overdue accounts, okay? So if if clients or if debtors know that you're going to charge them interest if they do not pay on time, they're more likely to pay on time. And the other one is to reduce credit limits. And remember, with this one here, you have to bear in mind that if you reduce credit limits, you might lose some customers who are going to seek other suppliers whose credit limits are longer than what yours now is, okay? And this one here is to freeze available credit altogether on certain accounts. So if the clients or some customers or some debtors have, are in a habit of not paying on time, you can freeze the credit that you are giving to them. And remember this one again will may affect your sales. Some clients may uh, look for other suppliers. Okay. And here is to end over, hand over errant accounts for collection. And these are some of the measures that you can use to control accounts receivables okay so if it's too low if your accounts receivable turnover ratio is too low uh these are the measures that you can recommend to be used in order for them to try and increase the accounts receivable turnover ratio i hope this has made sense i hope you have learned and gained value from this lesson and if you have please subscribe to our channel like this video and share it to those you think it might help till next time cheers Thank <laughs> you.